what's up people it's your girl adiola i know that many people would disagree with me about this issue but we still have to talk about it anybody who decides to snatch boxes or lead thugs to disturb it maybe there's the last uh, lawful uh, action he will take i really give the military and the police to be ruthless. Okay, so it's no longer news that Nigerian president has given the army and the police an order to be ruthless with ballot snatchers and he explained what he meant by ruthless. Anybody who thinks he has enough influence in his locality to lead a body of facts to snatch boxes or to disturb the voting system. He will do it at the expense of his own life. Thank you very much. Okay, so at the expense of his own life means to kill the person. This is for all those that are saying that he didn't use the word kill. Please tell us what does he mean by at the expense of his own life. Now, before I go on, I am not in support of snatching ballot boxes. I am not. And I'm aware that these thugs, they usually come armed and they arm people as well. So I am not in support of it and I will explain more on that later. But I'm really shocked by how people have been defending this statement by me. Mr. President, and hopefully you guys will hear me out about why I totally disagree with a president giving orders to soldiers to shoot his own citizens without arrest or trial in a democratic country. First of all, I don't believe that Buhari made that statement because he cares about Nigerians. If he did, he had four years to show it. He would have done more to ensure our security. I've never seen him give such an order since herdsmen have been killing people and herdsmen have killed thousands of people. He not only refused to declare them as terrorists, even though they are terrorizing people, but he made excuses for them to the extent of blaming farmers for not allowing herdsmen to graze on their land. Also, if he truly cares, it's not during elections that he would now equip soldiers and policemen. When thousands of our soldiers have died like animals in the hands of Boko Haram all these years because of inadequate weapons, he never came out to talk like this since our soldiers have been dying. Whether you're a supporter of Buari or not doesn't mean you shouldn't stand for what is right. Do you guys know how many people have died in southern Kaduna? I mean, last Saturday alone, at least 66 human beings were slaughtered in broad daylight. The president did not come out to address the nation like this when the citizens were slaughtered in broad daylight. For those of you defending his statement in case you've not noticed election is what is important to them election has become a do or die affair in nigeria they will deploy hundreds of thousands of security operatives policemen and soldiers during elections and they will make sure that they are they have adequate weapons on election day <laughs> The Nigerian police force is taking no chances whatsoever in this 2018 election, preparing so hard for Saturday's uh, gubernatorial election. And you can see just beside me, the police armored vehicle. It's not war, it's election. But these guys are saying the reasons why they are doing all of this is to tidy all ends in terms of security. Just on my left is the anti-bomb uh, uh, vehicle. Meanwhile, our soldiers are being killed by Boko Haram. He made that statement to protect his own interests, not because he cares about your security on election. Day. Now, the second reason that I'm addressing this is because when soldiers open fire in public places, stray bullets, stray bullets can hit anybody. Innocent people could die. Take a look at this video, for example, where they were stealing a ballot paper. I mean, if soldiers should start shooting in that kind of situation, look at how many people were around those that were running away with the ballot paper. In fact, there are voters who were running after the thieves. Soldiers may think that they were part of them and shoot them as well. The gun could hit anyone. And I know that you guys may not want to hear arrest them because you don't trust the system. It's like what happens after you arrest them? Nothing. I agree with you. I also don't trust the system. But shooting is not the solution. Already Nigerian security operatives are known for practicing extrajudicial killings. Look at how they killed 40-something Shiite protesters. For protesting, they killed more than 40 people. We've also seen videos of our soldiers executing people that they suspected were Boko Haram when they may not even be Boko Haram members. This last Sunday, we saw the video of a customs officer who shot someone because of 5,000 Naira bribe that's like 12 dollars despite the fact that we saw the video do you know that customs came out and said it was stray bullet whether it was stray bullet or not the guy is dead now they are telling us that the victim actually works with the customs officers that he was their water boy that he's not one of the passengers and
and that they didn't intend on killing him but whether they intended on killing him or not the guy is dead all these killings happened without the president's order and now that they've been given order on national tv all of you saying that and eh, nigeria needs an iron hand i don't know you don't know what you're talking about because people have been arguing with me since he made that statement on all my social media hand, uh, handles if you are casting your vote peacefully on election day and someone stole the ballot box and soldiers start shooting who is going to protect you from stray bullets and what if soldiers kill innocent people at um, opposition wards and then they come out and say oh they were ballot snatchers how would we know whether or not they are telling the truth because we won't be able to hear from the side of those that have already been killed why do you think that tinubu and others are trying to change what buari said it's because even they know that what he said was wrong again no president will give an order <laughs> that his own citizens should be shot summarily no uh sir he said he gave them the order anyway the third reason i'm addressing this is because it's like we are not aware of the fact that ballot snatchers are not the actual problem there are powerful people who send these ballot snatchers and those powerful people will not be shot by the soldiers or the police in fact i actually thought buari would say make sure you arrest them so that we can find out those who send them again i'm not in any way encouraging anybody to steal ballot boxes i'm not i'm totally against it but these powerful people are using unemployed youth they're using students they're using cultists to steal the ballot boxes you would never see a lawyer that is making good money among those that are snatching ballot boxes you would never see a banker that is making good money among those that are snatching boxes many of you with good jobs nobody can law you into something like that which makes me believe that one of the root causes of all this is lack of good governance if we have a good government that takes care of unemployment and basic amenities it would be really hard for people to law our young people into doing something like this we wouldn't even have to worry about thugs stealing ballot boxes one of the reasons why the government and so many of our politicians have refused to tackle unemployment or make sure that people are empowered is so that they can continue to have hungry people that will do whatever they want some people are so hungry that they will do anything if you give them some amount of money even if they know that it's wrong all these politicians want to make sure that they keep people down so that they can give them a little money to lure them to doing whatever they want but the fact is most of the time these ballot snatchers also work in hand with security operatives have you not noticed you will just suddenly hear that and the police that were at the police station suddenly went on break and it was at that time that the thugs arrived and they started shooting people and we've also heard of instances where the thugs were accompanied by security operatives they pack two more to it looks one was there one was here they came out with the civil defense and immediately they make the plan to scatter the boxes the police that is around arrested the boy I don't know how they collect, the civil defense collected the, the guy from the police. Can you imagine? These ones were protected by the civil defense. And we've seen instances where the policemen themselves or the soldiers were the ones snatching the ballot boxes. Look at this video, for example. The police and INEC officials decided to take the ballot boxes to an undisclosed place to count instead of counting it at the police station in, in front of everybody. They do these things with so much boldness. A governor in an opposition state, for example, can decide to give the police and soldiers 100 million naira to steal ballot boxes for him. So even if the soldiers should shoot the ballot snatchers, these powerful people can easily find other hungry people that would do their bidding. And while we're talking about this, what about all the powerful politicians? Politicians who have stolen millions and billions of naira, even dollars, and we know that they did this thing. Yet, how come the president did not say shoot them? And why don't we, the people, complain when they take them to court? Maybe we all say we have no faith in the judicial system. We say that nobody has been successfully prosecuted. How come we don't say that they should just shoot them, despite the fact that so many people die every day as a ripple effect of their embezzlement? I mean, when someone steals money meant to fix our roads, and people are dying in accidents on those roads, such a person is definitely responsible for their death how come we don't say that they should shoot them now i've seen the opposition condemning buari for this statement i'm like please i've seen a lot of article people you know condemning buari about this statement they make it look as if it's because they care for the people that's a lie that's all a lie they are also trying to protect their own interests shebi opasunjo said the same thing when he was president some years ago he said that police have acted according to the instruction they have been given that any criminal should be shot at sight. But now, 
they have even got additional instruction. Anybody who calls himself OPC should be arrested, or if he doesn't give himself to arrest, he should be shot. I disagree with Obasanjo saying that it's definitely not right. But if you condemn Buhari, you should also condemn Obasanjo as well and say that we condemn Buhari for saying this. Obasanjo said it as well. We condemn him. Election days are not supposed to be frightening. I've voted in Nigeria. I know what it's like. There's always the fear of something going wrong. You spend the whole day in line. It's always so rowdy. You were in the front of the line. Some people will just come. They push everybody. Suddenly, you are now at the back of the line. Not to talk about Turks coming to snatch ballot boxes. It could be scary. Scary. But you know, I've also witnessed four different presidential elections in America, and that's when I knew that what we do in Nigeria is abnormal. Election days here are just like any other days. There's absolutely no fear. You just go to the polling booth, you cast your vote, and you live peacefully. You know, that's what we should strive for. We should strive for orderliness. We should strive for no violence during election. We shouldn't be encouraging killings. By the way, the real problem on election day would be card readers that would not work in some places. Mm -hmm. A lot of underage children will also be allowed to vote in so many places. What do we have in place to ensure that all the card readers work that day? Do we have extra card readers? Are we addressing underage voting? Like I said, I know a lot of people don't agree with me on this, but trust me, you don't want to be where Nigerian soldiers open fire. But again, you guys know I don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So by now you must have heard Apostle Suleiman's comment on the coming election. When they say Apostle has not been talking, I'm not going to be talking. I'll be talking spiritual thing from the spirit. Mm. Okay, so that is so that we know that whatever he says after that is spiritual, it is from the spirit. Apostle, who do I vote for? Are you going to vote for who will kill you? Even if you are deaf, can't you see? Never vote for anybody that will cut off your neck. I say so. Put it on the internet, take it everywhere. By that, he's referring to Buhari because Buhari has done practically nothing to stop the herdsmen killers. We may not have a better option. We may not have a better whatever. But the man that will steal your money is better than the one that will take your life. I have spoken. <laughs> <Not sorry. laughs> okay, so the man, the man that will steal your money. <laughs> The man that will steal your money is better than... Thank you, thank you very much, man of God. <laughs> So for those who are not Nigerians, there's a communal knowledge. There's this, you know, knowledge on the street, not me, but you know, a lot of Nigerians generally believe that Atiku is allegedly a thief. <laughs> no, Bimi Tokam. I'm just trying to explain what the man of God meant by it's better to vote for a thief. So he's referring to Atiku. <laughs> So there's so much to say about this video, but you know, I think I'd rather just hear from you guys what you think about this video. However, I find it hard to believe that any of what he said came from the Holy Spirit. I find it hard to imagine Jesus Christ telling people to vote for a thief. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that a thief is better than someone who has not done enough to ensure your security. But to say this was from the Holy Spirit, heck no. The Lord told me to speak this morning. No, no, no. The Lord did not tell you to. Mm -mm. All of you are my children, whether you are opposition, or you are really party. All of you are my children. Oh, please. Let the will of the Lord be done. What? Let the will of the Lord be done after you said never you vote for so, so, so. You just told people to vote for a thief and now you are saying let the will of the Lord. Okay, so me, I don't know who is the will of the Lord. But we have several others on the ballot paper. Why tell people to vote for someone that you call a thief? Must it be a thief or someone that doesn't care about your security? I don't get it. And nowadays a lot of robbers don't just steal. Some of them kill in the process of stealing. I'm just saying, how is one better than the other? But you know, like I said, I don't want to comment on what he said. I would rather hear what you guys think. And you know, while Suleiman was doing his own thing, did you guys see the 1,000 pastors that stormed Abuja to march in support of Buhari? We have been led by the Spirit to hold a 40 days of prayer and fasting in the course of this exercise, undertaken on behalf of the nation. I can't. I cannot believe this. You fasted for 40 days. <laughs> it was revealed to us that President Buhari is God's anointed to lead Nigeria to greater height. You don't mean it. <laughs> God revealed to you that Buhari is the chosen <laughs> This is a trouble. We are more than 1,000 clerics across faith and denomination. 
We only deliver this message concerning President Muhammad Buhari, for it is what our maker has collectively instructed us to do. And we cannot do otherwise, lest we attract the wrath of God upon ourselves. <laughs> Why are these people doing this? We are aware that the opposition has been making false alarm to present themselves as the one destined to take Nigeria to a greater height and that they can liberate Nigeria. But we know this for what it is, lies of the devil. Okay. <laughs> so sorry. <laughs> can you all just stop saying that it was the Holy Spirit or it was God? Just say this is who we like and we would like others to vote for this person. It's, there's nothing wrong with in doing that. Pastors like this, I'm pretty sure that they will also preach to their church members to also vote for Buhari. There's only one Holy Spirit for God's sake. Who is really hearing from the Holy Spirit? Who do we believe? Let me tell you, you know me, I'm not a politician. I said, Baba, for the first time today I met you, I've never seen any humility like that. I don't know what you're arrogant about. Did I send you to play the harp? Mind yourself. It's the same God is not segregating about anything. He came, he had just finished his prayer. Let me tell you, humility will always come before honor. No. Thank you. But what is wrong with you now? That is no longer news. This happened like weeks ago. Everybody heard when it happened that the article went to a white government prophetess for prayers. All our politicians suddenly become uh, religious when election comes. Although people are circulating picture of her on Simbadio as well. I don't know what happened there. But the woman clearly said that Atiku came for prayers. But you know, him going to the prophetess was a bit funny to me because the National Association of Witches of Nigeria had already endorsed him. So... <laughs> And that one scares me a little bit because the witches endorsed Good Lord Jonathan in 2015 and then he lost the election. <laughs> Although the prostitutes have also endorsed Atiku, promising free sex on election day. Um, <laughs> don't, don't go to Abuja because of that, let me just warn you. Now keep in mind that the prostitutes also endorsed Buhari in 2015 and then Buhari won the election, so anything can happen. Um, <laughs> but you know, jokes aside, I want to know what you guys think about pastors in Nigeria, directly or indirectly, telling their church members who to vote for and also the fact that they are completely ignoring all the other people on the ballot paper let me know what you guys think about this you guys not know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so i can't believe it's been a year that a keeping it real viewer by the name adebola bola kale atolagbe passed away and you know i just want to remember him on this show as his parents his wife his siblings and his friends are also remembering him on this one year anniversary the pain never goes away people usually say time heals but that's not true i know that most of you don't know him but i needed to encourage his family members to always remember all that was said at his funeral i was told that this guy was the most selfless person and despite the fact that he's been sick over a long period of time he will still go out of his way to help others i heard that he was always encouraging other people and so if anything i hope that the life of adebola would be a challenge for all of us to live each day as if it's our last day and to put others first even when it's not convenient because it's not how long we live but how well we live and the truth is the only thing people would say about you when you're gone is what you're doing right now with your life and i have no idea who is in pain today because they lost a loved one but i just would like to encourage you that you should live your life in a way as if they can see you if they can see you would they be happy that you're down would they be happy that you're not eating would they be happy that you put life on hold would they be happy that you're sad all the time i don't think they would and the truth is they can actually see you as a christian i believe those who have gone ahead of us they watch us as we fight our own battles so if you're sad i don't think that's what they want for you i think they would want you live the best life that you can live uh, before you join them in eternity so please if you're watching me today and you're down because you lost a loved one accept my condolences and also be encouraged that your loved ones can see you and they would want you to move on may he so continue to rest in peace and to his family members please accept my condolences may god continue to comfort you you guys now don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real so I'm really excited to tell my Nigerian viewers in the UK that you can now use Wave to send money to Niger for free. Yeah! I told you, I got you. And not just Nigerians. If you're from Uganda, Kenya, Tanzania, or Ghana, and you live in the UK, you can now use Wave to send money to your loved ones back home without having to go to any office and without having to pay any transaction fee. All you do is download an app called Wave and you follow the instructions and you can start sending money home 
right away. This thing is as easy as sending a text message. The recipient will get the money in their Nigerian account within five minutes of you sending it. And if you want your loved ones to get an extra five dollars, then you need to enter my name Adiola as the promo code before you make your first transaction. After the first transaction, you can't claim the five dollars. So right now, Wave is operating in the US and in the UK. More than 100,000 people are now using Wave. So if they're yet to get to your country, don't worry, they're working on it. Now, if you have any questions for Wave or regarding Wave, you can call them or email them at this address. Sometimes they try to reply to people in the comment section beneath my YouTube video, but it's easier if you just call them or email them. They're they are looking forward to hearing from you. And if you're traveling home, now you don't have to carry huge amounts of money because you can already deposit it to your own personal account before you go home. Now, before sending your money, Wave will show you the conversion rate of other money transfer companies. Don't forget that with Wave, you are not paying any transaction fee. By the way, if you feel like sending more money, you can just call them and they will increase your daily limit to $2,999. That's like sending $3,000 a day. I'm like, say what? Anyway, so I'm really excited that you guys in the UK can now enjoy Wave. Don't forget to use my name as promo code so you can get the extra $5. You guys not doing much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Alright y'all, it's been real and I'm keeping it real right up in here. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And if you're yet to subscribe to my YouTube channel, please be sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much to all the people that have subscribed. We are almost at 250,000 subscribers. I'm like, say what? Thank you, thank you everyone. Please subscribe if you're yet to. Until next time, I'm going to see y'all later. Peace out.